Kathy Ford for that mini Scott Joplin concert. Nobody plays the Maple Leaf Rag like Kathy does. And she has this huge book of his music and she can do them all without even looking. Anyway, she is so appreciated. Um, we're honoring Scott Joplin as a native Missourian, um, mainly in the Sedalia and St. Louis areas. And I don't know much about him except that I love his music. And I love the way you played it. Let's have a round of applause for Kat. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our birthday party, celebrating our great state of Missouri. Did you notice that I said Missouri? Yes. How many of you say Missouri? How many of you say Missouri? You're outnumbered. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Come on, Missouri sayers. Okay, we don't need to do that. <laughs> however, we, however you say it, we are so glad you are here. Two weeks ago, I heard Gary Lezak, a, a local uh, newsman, predict that on the, on the 19th, which date are we? Nine. The 9th of December, we would have our first significant snowfall. <laughs> I've never been so glad to see the weathermen wrong. <laughs> It's my pleasure to introduce to you our Blue Springs Mayor, Cawson Ross, to welcome you and introduce his guest, Your Honor. Thank you. This is getting to be old habit, isn't it, Barbara? Barbara and I were together last Sunday uh, with the Community Services League uh, annual concert. Depending on where I am, whether I say Missouri or Missouri. It does. Yes, depending on the audience. Oh. You see, in my business, you got to know the audience you're talking to. <laughs> but I also know that uh, with Kathy Ford and Scott Joplin, I'm a people watcher. Yeah. You know, when I have to go to the mall with somebody else and they're shopping, I'm sitting out on the bench watching people. So I was watching you all here. With Scott Joplin, there was some patting their foot. There was some were moving. There was some that had the legs crossed but had that one moving. So if you can't be moved by Scott Joplin and Kathy Ford, I don't know what you can be moved by. Maybe we need to get Public Works and have a, one of those pieces of equipment come in here and move you. But anyway, I want to welcome you to the Missouri Bicentennial Mosaic dedication today. And I'm very anxious to be able to look at what's being displayed. Uh, Eleanor and I already decided that I am going to use my keen eye and assess a value to that. <laughs> Since we had 13 people that put it together and none of you had any real art experience. So I'm anxious to unveil it, but I know it's going to be beautiful. It's priceless. Priceless, <laughs> yes. But anyway, uh, we have a couple of council members here with us today. We have from District 1, Councilman Jerry Kaler. And his sidekick, Councilman from District 2, Kit Edmondson. You know what, as mayor, these are two peas in a pod. <laughs> that can be good or that can be bad. But one thing I praise them for, they are worker bees. If there's work need to be done, they do it. They don't delegate. That's a job for the mayor to <laughs> delegate. But anyway, we're just so happy that you took time out of your day to come here at 2 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon to be able to participate in this. And certainly uh, there's a program and you're going to get some history. Uh, we have a well thought out program. And why do we have a well thought out program? Because Eleanor Frazier did it. Yeah. Let's give her a hand. Certainly she has a supporting cast, but she is the spark plug. Anytime anything has to be done, I can count on her. So anyway, welcome, and I won't take any more time because you want to hear from the rest of the people on the program. So thank you for being here today.
Well, as you can see, the mayor and I have occasions when we have an uh, opportunity to talk, and this event was brought about because of that opportunity. But first I want to tell you about the fact that this is our time to celebrate it. It is an exciting day for all of us. It's especially exciting for those who, who created the mosaic, but everyone is pleased, we're pleased that you're here. We've been looking forward to it for a long time. We are particularly happy that this is a day of community-wide involvement. This joins together several community organizations and the city in a one-in-a-lifetime event. We're also pleased that the fourth grade students have been involved in projects involved in Missouri history and will be sharing some of their work with us today. Usually we celebrate a birthday one day of the year. What is, what is special about this event is that we are celebrating multiple anniversaries and the reason for the occasion happening throughout, is happening throughout the year, not just on one day. First, we are honored to be part of the year-long celebration of the Missouri Bicentennial. And we have been working diligently, I know those people there on the other side have been working diligently to reach this day, a day when we will dedicate the mosaic artwork that will forever commemorate this, this Bicentennial. Second, we want to celebrate the anniversary of the incorporation of Blue Springs. On September the 7th, 1880, this small community was officially recognized as a city in Jackson County and even before Kansas City became recognized as a city. Third, this is the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the Blue Springs Public Art Commission. Our mission is to enhance the city with art, art that contributes to the community landscape and promotes civic pride. With all those reasons to celebrate in mind, let us first focus on our state's 200th birthday. We are pleased to have with us today Beth Pike, who took a year away from her position with the Missouri Historical Society to visit to assist the Bicentennial Commission. She has seen firsthand the many projects and activities that people of this state have been involved in this year. But now this is our time for her to learn about our efforts and our time to celebrate. Yeah. yeah, put this up a little bit here. Hello, thank you all so much, Eleanor, for inviting us and uh, to be part of this event and Mayor Carson as well. Uh, it is such an honor to be here to, among all of you because when we started the bicentennial programming, um, it's all really actually started eight years ago. That's when the Missouri General Assembly tapped uh, my organization, the State Historical Society of Missouri, to come up with a plan to talk with Missourians about ways to commemorate the 200th anniversary. Back then, that was eight years ago, it seemed like a long time ago. And during much of that time, we had one person, one staff member, Michael Sweeney, who worked on a lot of those projects. He resides here in, in Kansas City, actually. And uh, Michael worked on it for many, many years, uh, setting up focus groups and going around and talking to individuals, asking Missourians, what is it, how is it you want to celebrate this momentous year? And one of the things that he heard over and over from our focus groups and community groups, whether they were going to libraries, historical society, community centers, centers such as this, was that everyone had a story to tell, every region. And so much of that was, we want to celebrate our culture. We want to celebrate our art. We want to celebrate our stories. And this is where the humanities really ruled in this state, because everybody wanted to talk about that. And uh, so, as you know, projects going Going on here, the art, the culture, in Blue Springs is far different what you might see here in Jackson County than you might see in Shannon County. But the one glue that we found by celebrating each of our individuality and our art and our culture, it, it has become more of the, the, the ties that have binded the state over all these years. And it is something I think going forward, um, and I think you all would probably agree with the experience you had with this project, is that art truly is the soul of our state in many ways. And um, I think that some it's a, it's a path forward where we can kind of come together and unite 
tonight around um, you know our individuality and and putting together such incredible projects. Just seeing the the artwork among the fourth graders today and how excited they were to show show me like the bluebird and the dogwood tree and um, just being able to have that expression of art is just really terrific. And and I come from a community which celebrates uh, public art. I live in Columbia, Missouri, and we have a percentage for arts program run by our city. And so we have a lot of art projects that come up. We've even had artists from Kansas City that were selected by committees and have created public art in my community. Um, just going, we, we have, uh, just the other day actually, my daughter's now in college, and we were doing a little shopping downtown, like to shop local, and we came across, um, this uh, one painted uh, electric box, you know how the ugly gray boxes we have, you know, set up, but, but they're necessary, right? We want, we want all of our electricity, we want our power. But where there was an electric box, and they started painting these. Different people in the community could paint, and, and, and so there was an artist when my daughter was about 10, and he was painting, of all things, an, an, a bird in a nest. And he saw Grace with me watching him paint and said, would you like to help me paint the the nest? And my daughter's eyes got really big, you know. And here she is in college. Ten years later, we were walking by, and we just happened to see that box, and she points it out. That's my nest. And and I thought, you know, that's that's community right there. Just community. So what you guys have done with this mural project, the lives you've touched yourselves will have also touched these future generations. Such uh, as students here today that got in, or engaged with their own artwork. And I just want to commend you for that because I think it's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm, I'm anxious to see the artwork here. But before I leave, I just wanted to uh, pass on. I have a little ornament, and I see you have a tree, and I'm going to pass it on to the mayor. This is a gift from the State Historical Society. We have a new building that uh, we came we built about two years ago. And so it's an ornament that features our building. And you, you can put it where you want, but I see a pretty tree right there that maybe <laughs> the community might enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again very much. <laughs> Secretary, when I was in the House of Representatives, always gave me one of these each year. Oh. I've got a supply of them. Oh. Years. Yes. But you probably don't have that one. I don't have this okay. one. Okay. Maybe I should keep it. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you so much for being here. Um, it's so exciting to be here. Oh my gosh, this is just historical. And I had to put on my history hat because I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history. Um, when I first moved here to Blue Springs in 1989, um, history was probably the farthest thing on my mind. And over the years, I've just become immersed. Oh my gosh, tears. I, I, I just can't believe all the history in this town, it's amazing. And um, I was fortunate enough to be uh, involved in a few um, things around town and immersed myself more and more and more and eventually um, I ended up, uh, well I'm a retired teacher for Blue Springs, art teacher. I ended up um, illustrating a book for the story of Blue Springs and uh, doing all the research on that was just really cool. So I'm happy to be able to share some of that um, and uh, I just want to know, does anybody say Sunda instead of Sunday? No, my mom always said, say Missouri and say Sunda. So we were always like, I want a banana Sunda. <laughs> I don't know, that, uh, I'll have to ask uh, my siblings about why what that was. But anyway, I am uh, going to read a little poem and I'm, I'm going to touch a little bit on uh, the subject of the poem, which is Trailing History on Walnut Street. Um, I worked with a very good friend of mine who uh, was trying to get a little sign on Walnut Street to say that that had been used uh, for the Santa Fe Trail. And in fact, it was used for the Santa Fe Trail. So just a little sign, a little sign on there saying this was used for the Santa Fe Trail. So um, anyway, I'll read the poem first and then we'll touch a couple of highlights of the, of the Walnut Street and um, maybe you'll learn something too. So this is called Trailing History on Walnut Street in Blue Springs, Missouri. On the way through Missouri, Missouri, 
there you go. When her statehood was new, ran a tributary off the river, known as Springs from the Little Blue. The color, they would say, had a beautiful hue. One of the trails the first pioneers followed, made by native feet and hooves from long before, became the trail of commerce and worship, residence and restlessness, but so much more. The trail took caravans to the top of the hill where they camped and got some rest. From the campsite, you could see how the trail would split to the south and the northwest. Up to 400 wagons might roll through per day. It took eight to 10 weeks to get there each way. Freighters, traders, and families traveled, they say, through Blue Springs, Missouri's trail to Santa Fe. All right, now we're gonna start at the beginning where the intersection uh, seven highway meets Walnut. And I started thinking, why Walnut? Why, why Walnut? And so I, I researched that a little bit like, oh my gosh, every street in the United States has Walnut. Why, why do we name that Walnut? Well, it is said that a woman named Rhoda Harris had some land near the cemetery before the cemetery was there and that she planted Walnut trees along the road there. Um, I met one of the Harris relatives at a library um, event one time and he said there may be one tree still existing on Wiz Chapel that may have been part of that. And that's where, right across from the Methodist Church, where that little white um, senior citizen's little living space is. So I don't know if that's true, but it's pretty cool. Uh, she didn't necessarily bring the walnut seeds from Virginia, which is where she came from, but she came here and she had seven kids. And then when she got here, she had eight more kids. So there's probably a lot of planting going on. Um, <laughs> so, but that was along Walnut Street. But before Walnut Street, it really was a trail. And when I first moved to Blue Springs, uh, one of the things I love to do is to find the highest point in wherever I am. The highest point is the cemetery. And before it was a cemetery, that's where the caravans traveling through would camp. That was the campsite. And uh, being the highest point, there were not as many trees as there were. So my vision, my imagination tells me that they, Indians first would look at that as an, uh, a lookout for other people, to, you know, so they knew what was coming. And then it began to become a, a campsite place, which is referred to in many history books. Um, one of the most famous people, I don't know if anybody has heard heard of Hugh Glass, some of you have, I'm sure, um, but there was a movie made about Hugh Glass by Leonardo DiCaprio, it was called The Reverend, and uh, he, in fact, was on that hill at a campsite one time, and he met Doc Willard, who was a famous doctor back then, and he had uh, some of his escapades, he'd been attacked by a bear, he barely made it, he, he was left for dead, and then he went and researched the people that left him for dead, and anyway, that, it all works out fine, but he was attacked by a bear, and then supposedly, you know, he slept in a horse carcass and all this stuff, but the story is, is that he went up to Doc Willard and said, hey, I never saw a doctor for any of those wounds, can you check me out? It was about four years after after that event happened, but anyway, um, Walnut Street has many many things on it. Uh, as you as you walk along Walnut Street, two of the older houses built back in the 1880s were uh, some of the people that moved from down by Woods Chapel, where the Circle is. And most people know that's where the first Blue Springs town was formed at that Circle on Woods Chapel. And when the train came through in 1878. They said, we can't make it up that hill with the steam engine, so you're going to have to move the town a mile and a quarter up. So that's where Main Street came in. And um, one of the interesting things, if you drive down along um, at Walnut Street, is that pastor's home, the retired pastor's home. Um, there were 13 houses built on that track in the early 1900s, and it was started by a philanthropist named William Volker. And William Volker was one of the trustees on the Nelson Atkins Art 
gallery. That was his summer home. So, and then the other one I'll point out is the, uh, if anybody remembers, when it was a pink house, it's Jeremiah Wood's house, and Jeremiah Wood is uh, also buried in the cemetery uh, across the street from, he's a little east of there, but that was also Judge Boron's house for some of the people that remember that. Um, and uh, it is said that Jesse James hid out in the house after a train robbery. And in fact, I know a woman whose uncle, or no, no, grandfather Williams lived there, had the farm there, and she, had, she said, I said, so was it cool? Did they say that, you know, he was holding everybody hostage? And they oh, no, he was a friend of the family. He came there all the time, so apparently not. But um, <laughs> that was uh, um, one of the uh, other other things about Walnut Street is you can see some of the public art that the city uh, highlights along along that route too. So it's just kind of a if you start at the beginning and then you walk you know you go all the way you can walk all the way down to where the park and the Woods Chapel meet now. There's a lot of history on there, and I'm I'm going to uh, say that if you're interested in a lot of that, that um, Eleanor printed a lot of these for me, and this is the story, uh, some great stories in there. Um, and also some pictures from the book I illustrated. So uh, with that, um, I'm glad that the trail eventually became Walnut Street. And uh, <clears throat> I think that the history on uh, Walnut Street is amazing. It goes on and on and on. And um, just like all of these little tiny pieces in here, that's, that's kind of like us. We, we make this mosaic of Blue Springs as well. So. Thank you for letting me speech and share my history. We're trying to make this a very special day so that you know what Blue Springs did in its history and what we're doing now. And we really want to tell you at this point in time the question of from, was from idea to reality. Several people have asked me, how did this come about? You know, what's the story? Well, it was a long journey. And the journey from idea to, to reality took about a year. So in late November 2020, I happened to be talking to Mayor Ross, and I said, um, what are you going to do for the bicentennial? What's Blue Springs going to do? And typically, Mayor Ross said, well, I think that's what the Public Art Commission ought to do. You, <laughs> you bring me an idea and I'll see what we can do. So that was my call. Isn't that what happened, Mayor? Yeah. <laughs> so the Public Art Commission works closely with Justin Stewart, who is the Associate Director of Parks and Recreation and our liaison, Public Art Commission's liaison with the city. So I read my ideas by Justin and ask what he thought and his concerns were how much is it going to cost <laughs> and but he supported me and said well yeah let's take it to the mayor so in January I offered several options to Mayor Ross and he chose the one that the path we we're on the one path we followed that is, that three Blue Springs arts and history organizations would work together to create a mosaic artwork that featured two state symbols, the bluebird and dogwood tree. And this artwork would also celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Public Art Commission. So he got both of them in there. So keep in mind that this was in the idea stage when I talked to him in January. So much so, that when I look back, it seems I was a little premature in my planning, in that I did not have an artist to create the picture. I had not spoken to any of the city, the three organizations about doing the work. I didn't know anyone who was a mosaic artist, and there was the problem how we were going to get the money. But about that same time, the mayor wrote, well, I've approved the plan, now it's in your court. <laughs> So that was kind of scary. But I started my research then for a mosaic artist. And in case you didn't know, there are not a lot of mosaic artists in Eastern Jackson County. <laughs> and no one I spoke to knew of a mosaic artist. So I turned to Google, and I could not believe 
that there was a Mosaic Art Studio just 10 miles from here in Oak Grove. And when I spoke to Rebecca Hyde, the owner, I found that she had just what I had dreamed of. She was a mosaic art expert. She had her own studio and she had a lot of colored glass. <laughs> she was willing to help oversee the creation of the art and she really wanted to be a part of the Bicentennial Project. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. So then next, I contacted Larry Randall. I'd worked with Larry for 15 years on the Public Art Commission. I knew what he could do. And also he has retired as he retired as an art teacher from Blue Springs High School. So he knew art. So fortunately he took the challenge that I gave him to plan the design, but he had one caveat. He said, I've never made anything in mosaic. <laughs> so I said, Well, here's your chance. You get to learn you get to learn something new. And let's go meet with Rebecca. So one day in February, this is February now. Larry, Greta, and I went to Oak Grove, and we could not believe that there was this art mecca, this wonderful place to create glass art practically in our backyard. The dream had come true. We had a place to create our art, a mosaic art teacher, an artist to oversee the design, but we still needed worker bees to create the artwork. In March and April, I took Larry's sketches of his planned design to the three groups and asked for volunteers to help with the project. Guess what? I had 14 people volunteer. Not a single person had ever done anything in Mosaic Art. <laughs> I thought that might be a problem, but when I talked with Rebecca, she said it'll work out. So now we have enough commitment that I went back to the city and I said, I think we should submit to the, this project to the Missouri Bicentennial Commission as an endorsed project, which made it even more special. So the paperwork took place, the city applied, and it was approved. So now we are really on the hook. We have all, everyone aligned and ready to go. And about the money, I wrote for a grant from the Missouri Association of Community Arts Agencies, and it was approved. And each of the organizations pledged some money to the project, and the city did too. So we were ready to go. Everyone was asking, though, how big is it going to be? Where are you going to put it? Well, we didn't have that answer, so we had to make that decision. And so I went back to, to Justin, and I said, it, it needs to be where it's available for citizens and others to see it. After all, it's public art. And finally, we decided we would visit Vesper Hall and see if there was a place there because that's where a lot of people come and go and where the Blue Springs Art League has its annual art show. So in May, Greta, Larry, Justin, and I trekked to Vesper Hall and I asked Larry to pick the spot. And he did. Over the fireplace, he said, and by the way, the art needs to be three feet by five feet. That's a pretty big piece of art. And he said, I, my drawing isn't quite that size. I'm going to have to adjust it. And he, so he did. I then told Rebecca, she says, that's really big. <laughs> that's going to take a lot of glass. I hope your people will be able to do that. She's, I said, well, they, nobody knows how to do mosaic, so I don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll find a way. She said, You'll, you will first need to find a carpenter who will build a strong frame and with a special, <clears throat> I got lost my page here. A strong frame with a backing board for the glass to adhere to it, and you need to find a way to securely attach it to the fireplace. So, carpenter, strong frame, big frame, backing board, attach it to the fireplace. So, I asked Clay Ellis, who is a master retired car retired master carpenter from Blue Springs. I knew what I knew Clay could do it, and I asked him if he would be available for the project. He met with Justin and Larry. And together, they determined the size of the frame, because it had to be bigger than the arch, backing, more details, and the color of the paint. So now it's June. I contacted Randy Cooper. He was the park superintendent at the time. And I asked him to take a look at the frame and determine how to hang this heavy framed art over the fireplace in Vesper Hall. 
And after Randy and Clay worked that out, it was time to give the frame to Larry, who then drew his design on the backing board. He took it to Oak Grove, and then Larry and Rebecca began to, the, to select the art needed for the design. Now about this time, Larry came to me and he said, can anyone else be a volunteer worker? I have a sister who's an artist and she'd be really helpful. Sure, I said, that would be fine. About a week later, Larry said, my wife Denise would like to work on this. Is that okay? <laughs> of course, I said. Then later, Larry came back. He says, I have two other sisters <laughs> who want to work on the mosaic. And one lives in Jefferson City, but she would be available to come each week to help. Well, who wouldn't want five artists helping on an art project? So the Randall family became the fourth organization to participate in the creation of the Mosaic Art. And by the way, none of the Randall family had had any experience in Mosaic Art. So now it's late July. We began to contact the volunteer workers that the project was about to start and that they would need to take a special training class with Rebecca to learn how to do mosaic art. And so August came and that's when we began. The class was held and everyone made their very first mosaic project. I think you've seen some of those in the, in the back of the room. Of the original 18 volunteers that included Larry's family, 13 continued to work on the bicentennial art. Four chose to be on the dedication team that's planned this event and one dropped out. From September to now, the worker bees have been diligently driving to Oak Grove to the studio to help create this beautiful, wonderful piece of art. Everyone would agree it was hard work, but I think everyone would agree they love doing it. So let me introduce to you the volunteers who created the art and, and the rest of the, the dedication team and the other people as well. So let's start with the with the volunteers, I'm going to ask them to stand and stay standing and hold your applause until everyone has been uh, introduced. From the Blue Springs Art League, Sharon Hammond, Sherry Helfast, Kathy Cornelius, and Norma Marshall, who's over here, stay standing. And from the Blue Springs Daughters of the American Revolution, Renee Wendell, Jill Frazier, Cerise Ivey, and Jennifer Plumberg Klein. And from the Public Art Commission, Larry Randall. And from the Randall family, Denise Randall, <laughs> Susan Andre, Leslie Long, and Jenny Volkart. That's our, those are our, just our team that created this art. And let's give them a <laughs> And we'll let you sit down. And now let's introduce the dedication team. The dedication team members are Barbara Landis, Greta Honer, Andrean, Andrean Kuban, and Carol Reed, plus Kathy Cornelius also volunteered to help plan the event. So let's thank them. I also want you to meet the other important individuals who helped make it possible. Randy Cooper, former Parks Superintendent. Clay Ellis, our Master Carpenter. And Justin Stewart, where he's in the back now. He's shy, Associate Director for Parks. These three people were really important to us and thank them. So let's give a big applause for everybody. While everyone had a part in the creation and presentation of the artwork, everyone I've introduced in some way, we all agree that without the knowledge, direction, foresight, and patience of Rebecca Height, we could not be presenting this artwork to you. I am so glad we have Rebecca in our arts community. Let me introduce her to tell you the rest of the story and for you to thank her for the tremendous leadership she provided to this project. Okay, well, like Eleanor told you, this has been quite a journey. 
And whenever she first called me, I'm going, yeah, 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 I've heard it before. Somebody's going to bring me a project. But then she kept calling, and she kept calling, and she kept talking to me. And finally, one day it occurred to me, like, holy moly, this is going to happen. So, and then she said, nobody knows mosaics. Oh, no. And then she said, not everybody's an artist. I went, oh, no. But they all showed up for the class, and very bravely, and very politely listened to everything I said, a lot of times with like a little bewilderment in their eyes and a little bit of like, what did we do in their eyes? And then the worst thing a teacher can do to their students, I gave them pencil and paper and said, now create. <laughs> and they all looked at me like, oh. but they did. And they did such a beautiful job. Now. They said we did have a little few bumps and I said, sorry guys, nobody works on this until you do your homework. And how many of you parents know that you have to put your foot down to get the kids to do their homework? And that's what we had to do. Do your homework. Do your homework. Get it finished. And pretty soon everybody did. And it coincided beautifully with Larry's getting the design done, the drawing done. And then we were ready to start. And bless Larry's heart, every time I would change my mind about what needed to be done, he just looked at me and went, okay. <laughs> and, we, and we, on the fly, changed things and changed things. And we would change things and we'd all stand back and go, that works. And then we'd work some more on it. And then we're going, how about this? That works. And pretty soon, we have this magnificent piece of artwork. And so proud of all of you all. Yay, you guys. All right. Thank you. This is uh, an exciting moment now. We're going to unveil the art. Yep. So you stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. And <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to call the other people to the... I'm going to call the, those who will unveil the artwork to come to the front of the room. So in addition to Rebecca, we'll ask Renee Wendell, representing the Blue Springs Daughters of the American Revolution. Larry Randall, our artist who designed the mosaic, and he will represent the Randall family, and Sharon Hammond, representing the Blue Springs Art League, and I will represent the Blue Springs Public Art Commission. personal view of what it was like to be on the on the journey. No. Thank you. Am I close enough to this little round thing? Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Teach your voice. Okay. Well, here it goes, a story. I know your program says a poem, but some of you know I like to play with words, shuffle them around and then deal them out, and sometimes they even rhyme. But not this time. I know the program says that, 
but what appeared to me was a brief history of what we went through, the history of the mosaic, state of the art. Did you know that this about Missouri? The Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis in St. Louis, Missouri, is known for the largest collection of mosaics in the world outside of Russia, the largest collection in the Western Hemisphere. The state-of-the-art mosaic, our mosaic, is very unusual in the fact that no grout was used in its creation. One piece of glass touches the next piece of glass. Bits and pieces of broken glass. Not from a riot or an accident, but strangers, friends and artists intentionally coming together to commemorate the 200th anniversary of our great state of Missouri joining the United States of America. Yes, the mosaics have been a journey, a shared process, and lots and lots of challenges along the road. Oh, the decisions that had to be made. Thank goodness for Eleanor and the mayor and for everyone involved. Who would do it? What would it depict? Where would it hang? The subject, a beautiful composition, and Larry loves this part. I mean, Lawrence loves this part. <laughs> The subject, a beautiful composition by Lawrence Randall, a vibrant bluebird, our state bird, gaining the viewer's attention, reigns over a springtime vignette in the Ozarks, with dogwoods blooming and sunlight flickering through the leaves. The border that surrounds the scene signifies the Missouri rivers, the fields and forests, and the red, white, and blue in the mosaic represent the colors in our flag. Rebecca, owner of the Creative Art Glass Station, our mentor and glass expert taught us well, having never made a mosaic. We signed up for her class, and each of us created our own small mosaic so we could really understand the process. Well, that was quite an experience. It was sort of a love-hate thing going on. <laughs> Difficulties, frustration, and of course, fun. Rebecca kept us on track, reminded us to wear our goggles, and encouraged us every step of the way. Through a tedious, colorful, exacting, and exciting journey, a lasting work of art has been created by many hands and minds to become a tribute to the folks of Missouri, to the history that keeps us together like the shards of colored glass. Placed with care by each member of the group, and as we placed those bits and pieces of broken glass, working many hours together, we shared the pieces of our lives and formed bonds of friendship and made lasting memories. I would like to say a heartfelt congratulations to everyone involved. Happy birthday, Missouri, and state of the art, our mosaic. Hello, my name is Liz Talamantez and I am part of the Blue Springs School District and I was very excited when Barb Landis reached out to me and said, I want to talk to you a little bit about this Bluebird project we're working on. And I was like, okay, what do you got? And what I learned was that an amazing group of people were working on a beautiful mosaic and our fourth graders in Blue Springs learn about Missouri history and we wanted to find a way to help our fourth graders be a part of this experience. And so what we did is we extended an invitation to all of 
of our fourth grade students in the school district and we shared with them a picture, it was unfinished, but a picture of where the mosaic was and we asked them to use this as a source of inspiration to think about how they wanted to express their feelings about Missouri knowing that it's our 200th birthday. And some students chose to write, some choose, um, students chose to sketch, some students painted, some students sculpted, and examples of their work and their inspiration are on the, are on the two tables over there. I have two friends here I want to highlight. Um, the first student that's going to share is Makai. Makai is um, from William Bryant and his class did a group, uh, a unique United group project. Um, they in together as a team they created their own um, bluebird uh, picture and every student had a piece of this uh, dr drawing that was created and I'll put this on the table afterwards for you to look at but, but each student's part that was added is labeled with their name and then they wrote a story they thought about and come this way honey they thought about what is this bluebird thinking about now before he reads a story to you I have to give you a little insight at William Bryant their mascot is the bobcat. So <laughs> go ahead and read. The bluebird sets off. Sure, the, hold on, honey. Yeah, I'm nice and loud and get up closer. Yeah. The bluebird sets off to find some bays. He perches on a blue bay bush that sits in a blue bay field. He pecks at a plump purple bay. This is delicious, he thinks to himself. He hears fluttering. Other birds startle him as they fly fast and fearfully into the blue sky. He hears a growl. Leaves rustle vessel and then snap. Before he knows it, a bobcat has pounced him. His tail is pinned d down by the bobcat's claw. Twitty, twitty, tweet, tweet, he calls for help. His bluebird <coughs> friends come rushing back. They peck at the cat and swarm him like a tornado. The bobcat retreats and backs away. The bluebird is relieved. He lives, he is happy to escape the bobcat for today. <laughs> When Barb and I were looking at this, I said, well, all good writing has drama, right? And there was some drama there. Okay, and this is Miss Layla, and she wrote, like what I would think of as an essay about her thoughts about being a Missouri citizen. What does Missouri mean to me? Missouri isn't a place with all the fun stuff ever. It's more of a place just to live, and that's just okay. But there are fun things to do, too, like the Arch, Great Wolf Lodge, but Missouri isn't a place you would just visit for no reason, right? That's why Missouri is more about the kind people that you see. Great memories of just having a gathering at your house with your spouse and friends. Or you see someone being kind to the homeless without wanting something back. Missouri simply just makes people happy. And every once in a while, you'll find these people I'm telling you about, and you might do something kind back, or maybe you'll just smile. But Missouri overall is just a great place to live. And if someone is being mean in Missouri, just don't be mean back, kill them with kindness, if you will. Now, I know that you might want to move somewhere with more places, with more stuff to do, but if you do, just remember, you'll most likely never find a place with as wholesome people as here. That's what Missouri means to me in this mosaic. It is so wonderful to see our next generation who care so much about our state. So thank you for being a part of our event today. I think it makes it even more special when we all bring our community together and having the school district and all of our organizations in the city and your citizens, that's what makes Blue Springs. And now we are ready to present the plaque that will accompany the art once it's in place. Now, it will eventually get in place in Vesper Hall uh, lobby over the fireplace. It's not quite ready. 
So we will um, be uh, letting you know when that's available if you want to come back and visit. But in the meantime, we want to recognize the group with a plaque, and I'd like to present the plaque to the mayor. And Larry, will you join me? Let's, get, let's go to the art. We're going to go over here. Let's go over here by the art. City of Blue Springs celebrating the Missouri Bicentennial through Mosaic Art. That was our theme. City of Blue Springs celebrating the Missouri Bicentennial through Mosaic Art. The name of the art, Art of the State, designed by large Randall artist and has a signature. Created by the members of Blue Springs Art Commission, Blue Springs Chapter Daughters of the American Revolution, Blue Springs Art League. Lawrence Randall family under the direction of Rebecca Hyde, Creative Art Glass Station 2021. I accept this on behalf of the citizens of Blue Springs, and certainly we invite you to come back when this is uh, this mosaic art is placed above the fireplace and certainly that's not something that I'm going to do <laughs> because I believe in delegating. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay we're coming close to the end of the dedication of this art of the state mosaic and um, I just want to thank once again all those who were involved in the crea creating this dream. You've heard their names, you've seen their faces, and I could not be more proud of all of them. I put 12 teensy little pieces of that glass <laughs> into that on, it took me about three hours on one afternoon today, so I can I promise you it was tedious. Um, um, the Blue Springs DAR, um, Rebecca Height Studio, Blue Springs Schools, uh, the Art League, and the Art Commission. We thank you all for the bottom of our hearts for bringing this dream to a reality. Um, the tireless workers who put all the bits and pieces of shards of glass into this epic mosaic will be enjoyed for years to come, right here in the lobby at Vesper Hall. And when Liz and I were talking one day, she said, this would be a great field trip for fourth graders. <laughs> so watch out. All right, just one more item of business. What birthday party is complete without the birthday song? Mr. Mayor, get up here. Please join me as we lead the audience in a rousing rendition of a happy birthday, old Missouri. <laughs> Hit it, Kathy. this program, um, Kathy Ford is going to play homage, my husband tells me it's not homage, it's homage, to our only Missouri president, 33rd president, um, Harry S. Truman, and it was his favorite song, and he played it a lot. Uh, so. Kathy, would you begin? And as she plays and you wander around, help yourself to the Missouri Cider and all of the wonderful old-fashioned family recipe cookies that have been made just for you. Thank you all for coming and do enjoy. Enjoy.